Sarah, it's Slash here from the Mindful Foodie. Today I just wanted to show you how I go about washing and cooking quinoa. I had someone on Facebook ask me how to cook it so that it doesn't turn mushy. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go through the process and hopefully you find it fairly simple. Okay, so for washing the quinoa I have a deep bowl and a fairly reasonably fine meshed sieve. So that it's very important so that your quinoa seeds don't fall through. And I have one cup of quinoa here, one Aussie cup, so 250ml. And this is Tasmanian quinoa. So it's grown in Tasmania obviously by Kindred Organics. And with this quinoa, so the, the local Australian quinoa, needs to be washed a few times. Unlike the one that comes from Bolivia which is pre-washed. So I just tip it into the sieve and with the sieve over the bowl I then, I'm very lucky here, it kind of works out well for me with the height and everything, I fill the bowl up with water with the sieve still in it so I fill it up until it's basically covering the quinoa and then I get my hands into it and I wash it thoroughly now, like I said with the Tasmanian quinoa, you'll need to do this step at least four to five times. With the Bolivian one, you probably just need to wash it twice only. So, I don't know if you can see, but that's what I've got happening there. So, just really, you know, squish the grains between your hands with the water. Okay, so the easy part is then you just lift that out. And I don't know if you can see, but the water, it's quite murky in there. So I'm going to tip that out. And I will do that step another four times with the Tasmanian quinoa. Okay. Now, the reason why I wash it so many times is because it is a bit dirty and murky. But also there's a coating, natural coating on, this, on the quinoa. It's called saponin and it's a bit bitter. So if you don't wash it thoroughly, you will get that bitter taste in the quinoa. And that really is a taste that can put some people off of you know eating quinoa without them really realizing that it can be washed off. And it's such a shame because quinoa is an amazing, amazing grain. Well, a seed really, but we refer it to as a grain, but it is a seed. Um, and it's gluten free. That's the main reason why I love using it. It's gluten free and it's light and not heavy in your tummy. So it pays to wash it properly um, before you cook with it. And um, so when you've done washing your quinoa, I just take it out. Now it it keeps it retains a bit of the water. So what I do is I like to tap it a little bit to get as much out because it'll fit. Um, you know how much water is in there when you're cooking it and it could become mushy so I do try to tap it and get as much out as possible okay so I think that'll do so I've got one cup washed and drained quinoa there and now we're going to cook it okay I have a medium sized pot here and I'm going to tip the quinoa into this pot like that. and we'll just turn that on I like to let it um, it's fairly dry because I drained it and tapped it on the sink before so you can leave it on the heat for like a minute or so stirring it so that the grains do dry up a bit more so we'll just and once you're pretty happy with that, what I've got is most people say I cook quinoa, the white quinoa, one to two, so one cup of quinoa to two cups of water. Um, but I like to cook it with just under, so maybe one cup of quinoa to one and three quarter cups of water. I find that you get a um, much more fluffier, not as mushy. Quinoa. So I'm going to tip the water into there. So 
So that was one cup and three quarters water for one cup thoroughly washed quinoa. And I'm going to bring that to a boil. Once it's boiling, I will put the lid partially on and turn it down to a simmer. Okay, it's just started boiling and I've turned it down to a simmer and you can, as you can see there's a bit of froth here so I am going to actually remove this froth and put it down the sink. Okay, so it's just simmering away there and you can keep it as gentle as you can with the simmering. And I'll just leave the lid partially on without being, being careful so that the pot doesn't tip over. So that will take probably about 15 minutes to cook. And I'm just going to leave it like that and check in now and then just to make sure it's on track. Okay, so it's actually been 10 minutes since it started boiling and then turned down to simmer that the quinoa is cooked so it's as you can see it's, it's how it is when it's when it's cooked and I am going to so that it doesn't keep cooking and get mushy I'm actually going to tip it into a bowl So in total it probably takes about you know 12 to 15 minutes to cook. So I'm just going to let it sit there. Sometimes um, you know I, tend, I put a um, tea towel over it so it um, absorbs any more moisture as well to get it nice and dry and fluffy but you can let it sit there and cool and then use it however you like it. I've got heaps of links below on how to use cooked quinoa. Now that you have your cooked quinoa, you can do all sorts of things with it. I've provided a few recipe links below, um, so if you give them a go, please leave a little comment to say how you went. I also wanted to say that you can actually cook quinoa in large batches and freeze them in portions. Quinoa, cooked quinoa freezes really well, and I like to do it from time to time so that I can, you know, pull it out the day before in the morning um, to make myself like a nice quinoa salad during lunch away from home and it's just easy if I have already cooked grain and then I can put salad ingredients together. You can also make um, an easy dinner with it. You can you know cook a pilaf or throw it into a soup because um, quinoa is fairly high in protein as well. Um, so it's quite um, a nutritious seed. So I, that's the main ways I like to use it, but I've actually given some links below on various ways of how to use it. I also want to mention that there's actually red and black quinoa as well. So you're more likely to find them in organic or whole food, whole food stores. And they're particularly good, uh, I find, in salads or if you wanted to make a quinoa porridge mixed in with, with your white quinoa. And they tend to take a little bit, the black and the red tend to, to take a little bit longer to cook. Um, then your white quinoa and they need a little bit more water as well so keep that in mind if you do uh, make the red or black quinoa. Finally, um, this is it's the end of our tutorial now so if you enjoyed this video and the tips please feel free to share it with your family and friends using one of the share buttons below. I would really appreciate that and I hope to make more videos. So I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.